This is 2A part 4, where we're going to look at the nested if option for working out which column number to use. If you followed 2A part 4, the third tutorial, you'll have seen how we use the if and method, and we worked out here that the column number that was going to be used to look it up, the column required, based on these criteria. What we're going to do though is now have a look at a nested if. Now what I've done is put some pseudocode here to try and explain what needs to go on. And we, the way it does it is it works its way through this bit by bit. So we say if the driving license is full, then if it's good, so we're here, and we'll go for this row next because there's more of these than this next row, then if the credit rating is greater than or equal to three, and if there's a guarantor, then we know at this point we've got to column number three. Now if there's not a guarantor, so if this is the else part of the if statement, then that's here, the no, then we know we've got to column four. Then the next bit, so we, before we, that we were if greater than or equal to three, so we're now saying, well, if it's not greater than or equal to three, it must be less than three, so therefore, it must be column five, because we've still got a good rating. Now when we end the if for the good rating, we get to this point where we say else, well if it wasn't good, it must be risky, and therefore it's column six. Now we started off by saying if full. Well if it's not full, then it must be provisional because we can't have an APR rate for somebody who hasn't got a driving license. That wasn't, that wasn't allowed, they're not eligible. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say, within this, within the else option, so in other words, if it wasn't full, else, if it's good, okay, then we're here. If it's good, then if it's greater than or equal to 4.5, which we can see it is, then column seven. Otherwise, well, if it wasn't greater than or equal to 4.5, it must be less than 4.5, and we're still within the if statement of saying if it's good. So otherwise, it must be eight. And then we end the if statement again. We can then say, well, if it wasn't good, then it must be risky, the else. So that means we're in this bit. So if it wasn't good, it's risky, this number doesn't matter, and therefore it's going to be column 9. Now what we can do is start to use this if statement and turn it in, or this pseudocode, turn it into an if statement. You might find that it's helpful for you to every time you see the word then, to replace it with a comma. And similarly, every time you find the word else to replace that with a comma. So what I'm going to do here is just replace the word then with comma and we'll replace the word else with a comma. And the reason for that is because that is what will go into the if statement as you write it. Similarly, the word if, I'm just going to re-highlight this so that it includes the beginning and the end. The word if can be replaced with if open bracket. So I'll do that and we can now see the open brackets going in. But our end ifs, and you can see that I've made a slight mistake in that I've put the open bracket in there. So our end if open bracket would actually be we're replacing end if with a closed bracket. So we can now start to see what this if statement is going to look like because I've managed to put in my commas, my open brackets, my closed brackets. I can then start to look at the specific criteria. So instead of full, it's going to be if DL type is equal to, and then it, remember it's the first option. So if DL type is equal to one, to determine our employment status, it was the employment risk. So 
So if the employment risk is equal to good, then if, what is it that's got to be greater than or equal to 3? It's the credit rating. If they're a guarantor, 3. Otherwise, well otherwise they're not a guarantor, and so it must be 4. Then we close our bracket because that's the end of this if statement here. Otherwise, it must be less than 3 because we're within otherwise, it must be 5 and we can close the bracket of that if statement. Then we want this one. So if it wasn't good, it must be risky. So there's our comma for otherwise. Otherwise, it must be 6 and we can close the bracket. Then we're right back to here. So if DL type wasn't 1, then it must be a provisional. Right? And if it was a provisional, then we've got a new if statement. If the employment risk was good, then we can go on to say, if the credit rating was greater than or equal to 5, then the column number must be 7. Otherwise, let's get rid of this bit because that was just in there for information. Otherwise, 8 and close the bracket because that's the end of that if statement. Well, if it wasn't good, then it must be risky. So we're moving on to column 9. Look, remember risky, column 9? And then that's the end of that if statement. And finally, we've got to the end of this if statement. So this is actually the text of the if statement that you need. We could just try copying and pasting this, but we'll probably find that if we do, it will come up with all sorts of errors. But let's have a go and see what happens anyway. So we'll click on this cell here, and we'll put that in. And it, it, it hasn't done it. So what we really need to do is we need to break it up into its different parts. So I'm going to move everything so it's all on one line. And that's going to take a little while. So you'll see that in a minute, it's all going to be on one line. So what I've done now is I've removed all the carriage returns, all the tabs and, and a few of the spaces. I'm just going to check and make sure by showing hidden characters. And no, there's definitely no tabs or carriage returns in there, so that's fine. So what I'm now going to do is copy and paste that and we'll stick it into Excel. Uh, let's use this cell here. So we'll put equals and then paste it in. Now, it's not going to work straight away, and there are going to be a couple of errors, and we'll have a look at what those are. And it's mainly to do with speech marks, because Excel likes the speech marks to be nice and plain. Can you see they're slightly italicised? They're not actually italics, but they're just a little bit moving off to the side. So if we replace those, then everything should work. Uh, it's probably going to tell me that there's a bracket missing or something like that, so I'll just accept that correction, and there we go. All done. Now, that's one way to create your if statement by writing it up as some pseudo code, building it up bit by bit, and then changing it so that you've got the brackets and the commas in the right places. However, the chances of that working first time are going to be very low, and when you then go and paste it into here, you're actually going to find that you're more than likely to have made three or four mistakes, maybe more. That means it's going to be very difficult to spot them. So really, the best way of writing an if state statement is to build it up bit by bit. So what we're going to do is remove that, and we'll start again. So we're going to start with our first if statement, and we're going to say if. If the driving license type equals 1, then all I'm going to do is just get the system to tell me true. In other words, to confirm that it's found out that the driving license type is one which is full. Now at the moment, as you can see, it's saying false. So what we're going to do is change our driving license type to full, and we would expect that to work. So we know that our if statement is working so far. So what we do now is we carry on and say, right, well, what happens next? If a driving license type is uh, full, then we want to look at the employment risk. So we'll now add on a new if statement. So otherwise, if, open the bracket, the employment risk is equal to good, 
than true. We also need another closed bracket because we've got two if statements. So there we go, it's showing true. Let's have a look at our employment risk, part time, change back to casual, showing us false. So we know that our if statement is working bit by bit as we build it up. So let's have a look at the next thing. So the next thing is to say whether the credit rating is greater than or equal to three. I can also look at what I had as my pseudocode. So if the credit rating is greater than or equal to three. So if credit rating greater than or equal to three, then we want it to say true. And again, we need an extra closed bracket. So it's saying false at the moment. So let's uh, increase this to something a bit bigger. There we go, we know this is working so far. Now I'm just going to change this so that this is back to the original pseudocode that we had. So if by magic, here's the pseudocode back. So let's have a look at what we've done so far. We've said if full, then if good, then if greater than or equal to three. And what we're, all we're doing at the moment is getting this to tell us that it's true just confirming that what we've done is actually working so far. So the next thing to look at is to move on to if the guarantor. But instead of saying true, we now actually get to a result. So we're gonna say if the guarantor, then we want it to display free. So we're going to put in here, if guarantor, remember we don't need to say equals true because it's either true or false. Then, so I'm gonna replace the word true with the number three and we'll close our brackets. And we can see that's saying false, that's probably because we haven't got a guarantor. It's a tick guarantor, and now we can see that's working. So let's have a look at what comes next. We've completed all the way up to here, so now we're gonna start looking at the else bits. So this is now saying, well, if they're not a guarantor, okay, then they must not be a guarantor. So if they're not a guarantor, we want column four because it's full, good, no guarantor, but still greater than three. So all we have to do at this stage, okay, is we said if guarantor, then three, otherwise we'll have four. So if they're not a guarantor, we'll have four. Let's see if that works. And there we go, it has. So if they're not, if they're not a guarantor, and we've gone through all of this process, uh, and we got to the point where it said, if greater than or equal to three, it won't have looked at this bit because it has said, well, if it's less than three, we'll have to go to the else. So if it wasn't greater than or equal to three, we got to else, it must be less than three, we're gonna go for five. So we need to find out where that's going to be, and it's going to be after this bracket here, and we're going to say, well, if it wasn't four, okay, and that if statement wasn't uh, used, if we didn't look at that, then it will be five. So if it wasn't greater than or equal to three, it will be five. And we can put all the other ones in as well now. We can put the six in as well. And the six is for if it wasn't uh, good, then it was risky. So we'll put our six in. So let's have a look at testing those before we move on, just to make sure everything works. So we'll put this to below three. There we go, it's gone to column five. That's good, below three. That's exactly what we wanted. It doesn't matter whether they're guarantor or not. Let's just double check. There you go, it doesn't matter, still column five. Now let's change it to risky. So we'll change our employment statement to unemployed. There we go, it's changed to six. So we've covered all of this bit here. What we now need to do is say, right, well, if it wasn't a full driving license, then it must be a provisional. So what I'm going to do just for now, just to make sure everything's working okay, I'm going to put in here, if not, then it was provisional. So we're going to change now our full driving license to a provisional, and we now know that that part of the if statement is working. So now what I've got to do is put in these bits. So instead of writing the word provisional, we need to go through the next part of the if statement. So we're gonna have a look at if it was good, then. Okay, so what I'm going to do is say, otherwise, if, and then we're looking at the uh, employment risk, employment risk equals, then well, let's go back with our true again. And we'll need another closed bracket because we've added an extra if in there. So it's coming up as false at the moment. 
So let's take our employment risk to be self-employed because we know that's a good one. And there we go, we've got true. So we know we're getting through this bit. And then it says, if greater than or equal to 4.5, so if it's good, provisional, good, and greater than or equal to 4.5, then we want column 7. So we're putting our new if statement. If, then we're going for the credit rating, greater than or equal to 4.5, then 7. Okay, we've got another if, if statement, so we're putting a, another closed bracket. Let's go for our greater than 4.5. There we go, seven's come up, that's good. Otherwise, it must be less than 4.5, so we'd be looking for column eight. So we're putting our otherwise for the next, after the next if statement, otherwise eight. Let's check that, so we'll go for less than 4.5. There we go, it's gone to false, that's good. Oh no, we were expecting that to go to eight, aren't we? So we're expecting provisional and good, right? If the credit rating was greater than 4.5, it went to 7. At this point, I put my comma in the wrong place. If you have a look, I put it after the bracket. And it should be within the bracket. Because what we're saying is, if it's greater than or equal to 4.5, then 7. Otherwise, 8. So that's it. If credit rating is greater than or equal to 4.5, then 7. Otherwise, 8. We haven't got to the end of the if statement, so I shouldn't have put a closed bracket. And this is why it's important to test as you go along, because it's quite normal to make these sort of errors. There we go, it's working now. Now, if that wasn't good, then we knew we had a risky option. So we're going to put in here, otherwise it must have been risky. So if the employment risk wasn't good, then it must have been risky. So I'll put that there. Let's change our employment risk to casual. And now we've got this one as number nine. Now that is telling us what column number we need to use. And if you look, there's the if statement. Okay, it's all there. It's not quite fitting into the screen properly, but that's fine. So it's going through the whole process exactly like we've built it up following this pseudocode. And this shows you why the pseudocode is so helpful. And all this pseudocode is doing is going through each of these bit by bit. So it's going through full, good, yes, and greater than equal to three. Full, good, no, and greater than equal to three. Then we've got the less than three, and so on. So it's going through the whole of these processes. Then it moves on to provisional. Looks at provisional good, greater than equal to 4.5. Provisional good and less than 4.5. And then, so that's the if statement done. Uh, the next video tutorial will talk you through using the VLOOKUP now that we know the column number, because remember this is all about finding which column number we need to use. Now if you've done the other method, then you'll have your column number here. And that's where I gave it the name column number. I could have called this one column number, but I'm going to be referring to this one. They're both the same outcome, so when you watch the next tutorial, don't worry about the fact that uh, I might be referring to this one here, because they both do the same thing.